station. Showtime. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Ready. ready? This is the Bob and Jeff Show. You, you seem to know all the players in this poorly acted farce. What do they call that one? Bob Lutz. Oh. If you're too cheap to buy the NFL Sunday ticket, then what you do is you go to a bar. Woohoo! In Jason Duda. For today, anyway. What do I? What am I supposed to do? Ninety-seven-five in twelve forty KFH. Stand by for action. Hello again, everybody. It is a Thursday edition of the Bob and Jeff Show here on KFH Radio. Bob Lutz, Jason Duda with you today. Jeff in the air right now on his way to Las Vegas. Isn't he landing here pretty soon? It should be landing soon. Like twelve fifteen or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it should be landing any time. Oh, boy. Uh, first trip to Vegas. You know, they got a Formula One race this weekend. And I was told that uh, parking near the Sphere. Now, I don't know if, they, if they're renting a car or what they're doing. Well, I'll explain but that But I've been you. told that it's going to be problematic. A week, I talked him out of renting a car yesterday. Good. I said, look, how much are you going to spend on that? Use a cab or use Lyft. And then I believe his name was Andy called in and said he couldn't agree more. Don't go out there if you're driving around, the, especially around the uh, strip area. And if you've never been there, you do not want to be I've driving. never rented a car in Las no. Vegas. Plus, you can go get dropped off and kind of walk or take the tram to wherever you want down there. It's that just be, way easier to not have a vehicle. That Plus, may be a... Go did ahead. You, did what, you know, what, what? Did you know he had a cargo van? As well, so he'd had a huge big beast driving a around. cargo van. That's all they had left. What's wrong with him? I don't know. I mean, seriously. I don't know. That's your kid. And I don't get it. A cargo <laughs> van. Yes. He said that's all they had left. Oh, for crying out loud. So we talked him out of that, and we said, you know what? You're going to spend the same amount of money, if probably not even less, if you just take take a cab or take uber whatever figure it out so at least he canceled that so we got him there so got helped the kid out a little bit on that part of it now i always stayed uh well i stayed in the strip a couple times but you just walk around i didn't have any you know there's shows in the hotels you, you just figure it out yeah there's no point if i don't know where the sphere is it's geographically it's in actually Las Vegas. it's just a little bit uh which way would that be little south of the Venetian. Yeah, it's been... It's right... I haven't I mean, been there in almost 20 years. I mean, it's probably a 10-minute walk, if that, from the Venetian. Well, he's not staying at the Venetian. No, but he can get downtown and then go. Or, he's staying at the Fleabag uh, Inn. I know he is. But take a... Just take a cab and get dropped off, and then you can walk around, then take a cab home. Like, you know, it's Should I be nervous way. for the kid? A hundred percent. The kid's never been out there. He has no idea what he's getting into. It's a good thing he didn't go with me because he'd have had some stories coming home, well, which might have been good for the kid. Let's be honest. He needs a story, I guess. Um, I have my own stories of Vegas, but uh, I'm not. I, uh, listen, my problem right now, the Eagles just announced four more dates for March at the Sphere. It's unbelievable. These guys just won't stop. Uh, that'll make 28 dates over the course of five months. So they're playing there four or five times a month, right? Right. right. Six times, whatever it is. Uh, they're not taxing themselves, but they're all 78, 77 years old. I mean, how they're doing this is unbelievable to me. Well, the problem is that if you're booking five months out when they're 78, 79 years old, you got some worries there too. Let's not go there. No, well, there's health issues. Stuff yeah, can let, come up. I these hope These guys not. aren't dying. I, <laughs> <laughs> the, the Don enough. Henley will never die. No, they'll probably stay around forever. But it's remarkable, isn't it, that they still continue to do this, and everybody who's seen the show says it's fantastic. I talked to one guy earlier today who said Henley uh, struggled a little bit to get through Boys of Summer when he was there. But uh, he's 77 years old. You're going to struggle to get through Boys of Summer. I think he'd struggle just getting through the show. I think he'd struggle walking up to the stage. It's actually quite impressive as hard of a time as I give you guys. It is 
For 78 and 79 year olds just to keep going? 77 and 78. Well, whatever. It's close enough. Like, calm down. <laughs> Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Well, don't you want them to get to 78 and 79? Sure, but they're well, not then, there don't yet. Don't worry about it. So, the way they go. They're not there yet. So, the question becomes do I go? Uh oh. I was thinking about this the other day, or not, not the other day, earlier today. I saw the Eagles first in 1977 when I was 22, right? I saw them again. Now, they broke up. I saw them several times in my 20s. They broke up in 96, or I'm sorry, uh, in 80 when I was 25. They didn't reform until 94 when I was 39. I saw them when I was 39. Okay. In Denver. Okay. Okay. So I saw them in my 20s. I saw them in my 30s. I saw them a few times in my 40s. I saw them in my 50s uh, several times. And I've seen them in my 60s. I will be 70 in March. Uh-oh. Do I go to one of the March shows to be able to say at my funeral when they play the video clip, <laughs> you know what, bitches? <laughs> I might, I might actually say that. I saw the Eagles in my 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Six different decades. Is that worth doing? Just so I can say that I think so. in my uh, funeral video. I think so. I do. Why not? Nah, that video is going to be good. You go, you'll stay at one of the casinos. You won't have to do anything except take a cab over to the, the Sphere, take a cab home. Yeah. Take a cab to the airport. You're done. It's not going to be difficult. I'm driving if I go. You're driving? I'm driving. What? I love the experience. I'm driving. No doubt. Well, then I'm not sure. <laughs> You're going to be 70 years old making that trek. Ah, warrior. Road warrior. How many days will it take you to get out there? Two. You'll get her done in two? Yeah, I'll drive. I'll drive to uh, uh, somewhere in New Mexico in, in day one, and then the rest of the way day two. Okay. I'm not gonna get crazy and drive straight through. No, no, don't do that. Then we'd really have to be worried about you. I drove to L.A. in 2017 and back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I did okay there. That's good. I remember That's that. Seven years ago, though. I know. <laughs> You left this show in my hands, and it's still here. I don't know how. What, what, what were you thinking? I don't know how. We didn't care. We, we were seeing the Eagles. That's true. That's absolutely the truth. I think you should do it. I Book it right now. You're on your computer. Just book it now and be done with it. Mm, it's tempting. It is tempting. Uh, anyway, we got due to end today for Jeff. Jeff will be out again tomorrow. Chris Davis will be my guest host as Jason Duda will be sitting comfortably at, uh, in Kansas City watching his daughter and the rest of the Mays Eagles play in the 6A state tennis tournament. I will. That'll be fun. I can't wait. We wish the best for you. We do. We're pulling for you. Well, I am. I've, I'll go ahead and say that. It's about time you said it. <laughs> You're pulling for the Eagles. It's both Eagles. There's four of them going. Well, I'm talking about my Eagles and your Eagles. Oh, I see. I did a little. Uh, well, can we? We'll get in. We'll get into it in the last segment. You know me. I try. I get ahead of myself. Well, it's, it's exciting. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, tennis and the Mays girls and uh, the six A tournament coming up later in the show at two forty five today. Paul Mills, Wichita State head basketball coach, will join us. It's a media day out at Wichita State today, and uh, right now Coach Mills is in front of this uh, media throng here in Wichita. Really? Talking about his basketball team, and it won't be long till they open up the season. Exhibition game in less than two weeks, and their season opener on the road this year at Western Kentucky hmm. in early November. I don't think they've opened on the road, and I don't know when. It's a good question. It's interesting. And the Hilltoppers have a pretty good program. Well, it's... Uh, That'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Well, yeah, of course it will, because we want to know what's going on and how this team's going to be. 
you just don't know anymore because there's so many different people in and out and players in and out and blah, blah, blah. It's crazy. Well, they got a lot of attorneys, though, but some they, they, have some, they have some interesting pieces. We'll talk to Paul Mills about it, how it's all shaping up. At 325, we will make our picks. Uh, believe it or not, you moved past me into second place. I'm not surprised. Uh, bizarre. How's yeah. that bizarre? We all had good weeks last week, except for the big fella, Anthony, who may or may not be uh, still around in the picks. What's going on? I don't know. Haven't heard a word. Haven't heard a peep. Yeah, even for this week? No. Well, who are we going to get to fix, finish, fill a spot? Well, we're not. We're just going to go oh. with, with the four of us. Uh-oh. Make it easier on you. One less person. Well, the four of us. We did it last year. I know. But I anyway, know. you won the week with 36 points. Jeff, 35. Yours truly, 23. Max, 19. We actually, Max and I, did better in the eight games that we picked. We always throw in a ninth for a bonus. Uh, but in those eight games, Max and I went six and two. You and Jeff went five and three. But you got the big Colorado bonus. Well, of course I did. That's part of the way. That's part of the game now. And this week I made the bonus pick San Francisco and the Chiefs just to mess with Max. Yeah, that's going to kill him. <laughs> so he just, he's just right now. He's, he's got to go 10 San it. Francisco, doesn't he? You would think he would. You, you would think he would. Unless he's just been uh, faking us the whole time. Well, we'll find out, won't we? We will. Absolutely, we will. I can't wait until he has to figure that out. That was a stroke of genius on my part. You are so smart. To call him out. Oh, it's just crazy how brilliant you are. I had 24 Uh, points last um, week, Bob. Say what? I had 24 points last week. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Arizona. for seven. Arizona for for two. Arizona for 12, two, LSU 15, three, Texas eight. 23, 25, and then you lost six. Yes. You had 19. I had, the, I had the Ravens for four, the Bills for seven. That's 24. Right, that's 11, Max. No. Five, 13. That's 11. 15. Yeah. Max, you don't have a clue on how to add. <laughs> you, yeah, okay. You've proven that. Yeah, you don't have a clue. Your numbers are way wrong. I do you it got on a Texas calculator. For eight. No. Yes. Shut up, Max. At five. You got Texas for eight. Arizona State for two. two. That's Th- ten. Th- LSU for the thirteen. Three. three. BYU fourteen. Baltimore eighteen. Buffalo for seven. That's twenty-five. You lost six on your pick of K-State for the bonus. Twenty-five minus six. Nineteen. Is Nineteen. The Ducks for five. You oh. missed the duck. No, I had the ducks. You did? Yes, the ducks were five, the bills were seven. Yeah, yeah, it was a one point game. Well, then you did have 24. Thank you. There you go. And here up, we Mac. go. Shut up, Duda. Here we go. The I, I, well, I, then I got to adjust what you guys had. Yeah, I'll get figure it out. Yeah, we'll do it later. We'll figure it out with, later. Where Nobody we're at, wants fine. to listen to that. Oh, they don't. That nonsense. It's all nonsense. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so Max uh, actually won the week when we go by record. Well, that's fine. We can go by record. It's, it's off of points, so I just go for the points. I mean, I hit all the big ones when uh, I need Last to. year I won points and record, so last it didn't really matter. in the past, Bob. didn't really it's matter. It's in the past. Um. Baseball today. Guardians. How was Jeff feeling yesterday? I didn't. He was didn't pretty, really reach out. Pretty, well, how was he doing? He was feeling g- good. He's like, well, you know, would, but he did ask. He said, "Are we going to get back to play a game at Yankee Stadium?" And I said, "No." Oh, you did? But I did. Well, I don't think they're going to. They oh. can't, Bob. They can't get a hit when they need it. They can't. But these series can turn. I, I I don't know. I, they can turn. I didn't say that they were done or out. If but he you asked said my they're opinion. not getting to Yankee Stadium. That's well, pretty- he asked my opinion. I'm not saying that that's going to happen, but my opinion is that the Yankees How are going to win you that do series that to the kid. Well, because he asked me a question. He's excited. He's going to Las Vegas. He's going to watch uh, the games in his seat at the Sphere. The, something like that, and 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 now he's probably just uh, deflated. Uh, he was fine. He was just fine. 
There's well, they no got to win today uh, to have any chance. Any chance. Yeah, and we talked about that. If they go down 3 nothing, they're not going to win four in a row. No way. Not a chance. The so, Dodgers showed me something last night, and so did Walker Bueller, who I thought, man, that's a, this is kind of a weak link. He's not the guy that he used to be the coming off this injury, and he went out and just shut down the Mets, and now they lead 2-1. to one. And the Mets have a game that they kind of got to win today. Yeah, they need to win this one. You don't want to go down 3-1. It's going to be tough. We're going to have a Dodger-Yankee World Series, aren't we? Well, it's because you picked the other two teams. <laughs> I don't think I did. We talked about it, I, uh, and you said... I think I picked the Mets, but I don't know that I picked the You Guardians. said Cleveland. You don't even start. You Maybe it's Cleveland. wishful thinking. Well, it very well could have been. But you did say Cleveland because you were pulling for Jeff and you wanted to see Cleveland and you didn't want to see a Yankees, Dodgers, because that's a lot of TV wanted that. You picked Cleveland. Can I? Uh, it's all right. Can I just say that this might be a, a moment of weakness? But I do want Jeff to have a moment. With the Guardians. Uh, well, I, but I, then if he does, he'll be... You're never going to hear the end of it. He'll be insufferable. And you know what's going to happen every single time. You know you know what he's going to say. When's the last time the Cardinals won? Yeah, how, so how... And you, so you're going to have to listen to that for... you. Do you know how long? Mm. Could be a while. Could be a while. Do you want to deal with that? You never know when you're going to win another one. Never. So you don't want to deal with that every day, do you? But is that enough for me to say I don't want the Guardians to win? I don't know. That's... How would you feel if it was your son? Does Jackson have a team in any sport? No. What? What's? Uh, what are you doing over there? Well, uh, what are you? What are you talking about over there? At where? At your, in your house. What are you? Why don't? Why don't? Why doesn't anybody pick a team? I don't know. Does Dia have a team? Uh, not anymore. See, honestly. She picked the Giants. She used to be a Giants fan. What happened? She just kind of, after uh, Strahan was gone and then Eli oh, you're was. talking about football. This is football. And the then, New York Giants? Yes. Because she was tired of hearing about Peyton Manning all the time and she felt, felt bad for Eli. And she always liked Strahan. So she was on the Giants bandwagon. And then, of course, they win two Super Bowls while she was a fan. And then the last 10, 14 years, she. She's no interest. But, yeah, she had it. That was the only team. And Jackson, uh, what's his sport, a favorite sport outside of soccer? I don't know. Does he he have... doesn't, doesn't really have one. I try to get him to watch games with me. He has no interest. He'd rather watch soccer or, and highlights on his phone. I've tried. to. I've tried. Well, you but I'm not going to pin him down. What are you down. doing, man? I'm not pinning him down. I'm going to say, no, you're watching this. You're doing this. Pick a team. Because Bob says you need to have well, that's a team. That's exactly what I would have done. Well, Pin him down. That's what you'd have done, and I see where you Jeff love is. love me for it later. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I doubt it. There's a possibility, but I doubt it. So, yeah, that's that. I don't know. I, I have to believe that when I was just a young boy, right? When you were a youngster? Because I've been a Cardinals fan forever. I have to believe that. Uh, being around my father when he was listening to games and wanting to share that moment with him, that had to be where it happened, right? I would think. And it just became part of me. Like right. it's, it's, I can't even control it. It's like true. It's just there. Can't you argue. Couldn't, you couldn't get it out of me if you tried. Probably not. I just wonder how you and others miss that. Your dad had your dad. You said your dad was a big fan. It was huge baseball. Like the Easter Expos? Blue Jays. Blue Jays. And then I like the Expos. But he had to have a hockey team too, right? Well, with the Oilers growing up, it was Edmonton. What about football? Did he uh did he We play? didn't watch NFL. I didn't start... Canadian, the the Canadian yeah, the, the Edmonton, well they were the Eskimos at the time. Did he like basketball? He liked ba did they but play we did... basketball up in that area? Yeah, he played basketball in high school. He was a really good basketball. Dad was a really good athlete. Like when, when he was 18 and Bob Rossler, his best friend, was telling this, this story to us, and I didn't know the intricates of it, but at uh, his celebration of life, Bob was telling us the story of 
um, Houston Astros came up north, and they put on a clinic, and they wanted to see if they could find that a ballpark. Far? Yes. So there were 60 guys that went out, <laughs> and after an hour, there was only one, and that was Dad. And they, he said they worked him out for four hours. Wow. He said he couldn't lift his arm when they, when they were in the truck driving home. What caused the Houston Astros They're looking to go for- that far north in Canada? To the end of the world, practically. There was so much good ball back then. Like, Sexsmith, a town of, at the time, 1,200 people, uh, was in the Wheat Belt League. And when they played, there was a couple hundred people at every game. And they brought up two Americans every year to just to play baseball. Hmm. It was, baseball well, that's was, interesting. was big back home. So that's how, that's how... Well, I wish it, I wish it would have become a part of who you are, and I wish it would uh, would become a part of who your son is. I, I, well, what do you mean? Uh, who's his soccer team? Liverpool? I mean, for crying out loud. Well, it was whoever Ronaldo was playing on, but now he's done, so I'm not sure who it is. <laughs> uh, love these conversations, don't you? Oh, they're fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> You're just the best. Oh, they're fun. Oh. We'll take a break, come back. Maybe talk more about it. Let's do that. I can't wait. You love it. I do. Back in a minute, Lutz, Duda, a Thursday. Stay with us. This is the Bob and Jeff Show on 97.5 and 1240. Jason Duda is here. We'll be talking with Wichita State head men's basketball coach Paul Mills coming up at uh, around 2.45 today. Uh, We were talking about, uh, I don't know, being fans. We get into that with Duda occasionally because both Jeff and I are just mystified as, as to how a Duda doesn't live and die with, with, the, with one of the teams. Whose jackets are those over there, by the way? What jackets? <clears throat> How'd they get there? I don't know. I usually uh, don't they wear weren't jacket. there. I don't understand it. I, I just looked over and I see a, a hoodie and a jacket, and I, and I don't know how they got there. And I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> just squirrel. <laughs> Start talking about something, and then you go right to the jacket that's been laying around. How long has it been here? I don't know. I just saw it. Well, I don't know whose it is. Well, I don't know whose it is. I, I it bothers me. Why would it bother you? Is it your jacket? I don't know. I haven't. I'm not over there where I can see. It's well, just I, laying on the floor. I don't get it. Maybe it's Jeff's. Well, I wonder what he did, how it got there. Well, he comes over quite a bit. Does he when I'm not here? Oh yeah. I mean, we've talked about that. Plus, he's when you guys do the show, he's here. So oh. he's here a lot. Well, I don't know. Uh, I, I just haven't seen it. Sorry. I, I, I get hey, easily distracted. I know. It's okay. It's okay. I understand. Wouldn't that bother you if you were at home and you saw? No. <laughs> it really wouldn't. I don't I don't get it. It'd be a, you could lay there for three weeks and then it'd be like, I don't know. It's been there for a while. But wouldn't you wonder how to get there? How, I don't know. I just assume somebody left it. Well, I don't make those assumptions. Well, I, I would assume since we were at your house, somebody left it here if it's not your jacket. So, you know, part of the uh, the kitchen remodel project, which is still ongoing, another, we think a week from tomorrow will get done. It'll be done. Ooh, that'd be we'll good. We'll get the floor down today. Yeah. And then it uh, takes off after that. Right. Um, floor looks good, by the way. Thank you. I like it. Thank you. Like, in all seriousness, it looks good. Well, I appreciate well, that. Well, you're welcome. We'll see if you like the rest of it. Well, we'll see. You and like I'll, the cabinets, don't you? Cabinets look good. The floor looks great. I'd like to. I can't wait to see the yeah, finished we'll get, product. We got it coming. You know, we still got, we still got uh, the, the the countertop and the and uh, the lighting and uh, what else? Something else. I don't know. Electrical. Oh, the black backsplash, electrical. Oh yeah. All. There's lots of stuff to be done. We replaced our electrical box. You know that yeah. we uh, it was back in a it, it hadn't been replaced in forever, and uh, we were told we needed to get that done to come up to code and whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, just another, you know, here's 
I won't say the cost of it, but it, it's it's not cheap. No, but for you, it's fine. No, it's not. No, let's not. Uh, let's well, not. Well, that's pretend. what you keep telling us. So I'm let's just not going pretend with it. that I got that I can just uh, write these checks. Well, that's what you seem to be telling us all the time. Well, I got money, but I mean, let's not let's not get crazy. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. No crazy money. <laughs> I mean, let's not go nuts with it. Uh, Who's playing the Thursday night game tonight? I'm sure you Denver know. Denver and could, New Orleans. I could not care less. No, honestly, I, I couldn't either. Well, it's Sean Payton going against his former team. Going back, which will be the storyline, of course. Which is okay, but, but that's I don't think that's enough. I'm certainly going to watch baseball over that. Well, and consider New Orleans, no Derek Carr, no Chris Olave, no Rahid Shahid. They have no none They're of their terrible. offensive players except Kamara are playing. Denver's offense isn't something that you want to watch and think that, oh, this will be exciting. No, I don't. It's not. This may be one of those games where I probably won't watch that much of it. You'll be watching the uh, Dodgers and Mets. Well, I got to go to I got soccer tonight. So. Oh, that's right. Who's playing? Oh, yeah. Well, it's windy. It is windy, isn't it? I it's tell crazy you. It's crazy out there. Then I got the Guardians right after the show today. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what are you, what are you going to do? Man. I got to help with the kitchen stuff. Oh, you're helping with the kitchen stuff now. That's uh, awesome. So much. I bet those guys upstairs cannot be thankful. Thankful enough that you're going to be helping them. Uh, Man. What are you going to It is windy. <laughs> but we'll see. Well, you know, it's windy, mean, Bob. It's wind it's windy. It's, it's windy. I mean, it's windy. Uh, I don't know what else to say, but it's windy. Oh, uh, my wife moved those jackets out of the laundry room uh, when the guys were here working in the laundry room. See, Thank there you. you go. Thank you to my wife for explaining. Do you that. feel better? My son is staying, staying at the Silver Sevens Hotel. Never heard of it. <laughs> well, I'm going to. You got to Google that. See if they got a picture in there at all. There's no way there's a picture of that place. There's got to be. No way. No way. Silver Sevens. Silver Sevens. There it is. Oh, uh, oh there she actually is. Actually, doesn't look too bad. It yeah, doesn't look bad at all. Huh. A little uh, Southwest style, a casino in the hotel. Of course. Not bad. No, it looks pretty I good. I thought this was going to be, let's look at one of the, woo, look at oh, that room. Wow. Not bad. What? I figured he'd be staying in a place like Hooters or something like Look that. Look at that. There's the casino. They got a blackjack table. They got a... They got I, a... It, the casino floor showed a blackjack table and a bar. And then some slots. Hey, that works. Look at that. It works. I, I don't I'm know. I'm impressed. I may stay there when I go. Well, you probably should. I mean, it would only make sense for you to stay there as well. I got to be honest. I didn't have high expectations for the silver stuff. Actually, set. that thing looks that looks really nice, to tell you the truth. <laughs> and it's off the strip, so it'll probably be a little quieter, which would be nice. Look at that baby. Got a pool. A nice pool. Good job, Jeff. Well, there you go. I can't, can't, I can't get on, on him for that. Can't knock him on this one. Normally, it's really easy to find a spot to knock him on. We'll give him a break. I wonder how far it is from the uh, sphere. I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe we can get him on that. Well, I guess we'll just have to pop up how far from there to the sphere. I will when I have a little more time. Let's see if I can figure it out here, but give me a minute. Uh, I, I can't give you a minute. We got to get. We, we got to be fast. Okay, well, then I'm not going to do it because there's no <laughs> point. <laughs> Why am I so hard to get along with today? I don't understand. This is a normal day. I don't feel like it's any tougher than any other time. Normally, I'm pretty nice. <laughs> but Sorry, uh, to but today seems to be a little different. So we've talked about the games tonight in the Major League Baseball playoffs, the Thursday night game. Uh, we, we're going to make some picks, and we got four good, good NFL games to pick. Yeah, and they're the only four. But they're they are good ones. I will I will give you that. They are uh, all really really good, and this will be a tough week to pick games. I think uh, because I don't see how you could pick with a lot of confidence in the NFL, which you love to do, and you yes. hit them all last week. I did. 
You got your six, your seven, and your eight in the NFL. Uh, and, and that's kind of your motive. You, you, well, you I'm fancy more com- yourself as an NFL guy. I'm more comfortable with the NFL. I keep up to date with it more than I do in, in college ball. I still keep up to date in college, but not as much as I do in the NFL. So I'm more comfortable. So normally when we do our picks, my bigger picks are always with the NFL. You know, and, I, and that's interesting that you say that because it seems like on a weekly basis, I get more into college football than I do the NFL. And I'm not sure why. No. Uh, I think it's because we have two teams here in the state. Probably. Uh, that keeps it very interesting for me because I covered KU and K-State for so many years, and I'm still... Very interested in that and the Big 12. And I'd, I'd say my level of interest in college football is really centered on the Big 12. Old habits die hard. I'm still kind of into the Big 12. Well, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I like the NFL, don't get me wrong, but I think I'm a little more into the college ranks. And like I said, everybody's got their opinion on what they would like to do, what they want to see. Yours Houston is- at Green Bay, A-list game. That doesn't get much better. I would agree. Detroit at Minnesota. That fantastic game. That'll be a doozy, that one. That's, a, that's such a good game. It's ridiculous how good it is. Baltimore at Tampa Bay. Another good one. That's right there. Yeah, that's a Monday nighter, isn't it? And then Kansas City at San Francisco. Those are the four. I find them all difficult. I, I, can't, uh, I can't figure them out. No, they'll be tough. This is a t- it's, a, it's a way tougher week, I think. Last week, I liked the games that we picked this week they were they're a lot tougher they're going to be good games all four of those games are going to be good okay if i if i ask you uh to lay down odds that the super bowl teams will come from those four games we'll have an afc team and an nfc team would you would you make that pick yes wow straight up even money yeah you wouldn't get better odds than that i don't think that would, a straight up, straight up bet out of those, those teams that we're picking this week. You got Baltimore, Houston, Kansas City, uh, out of the AFC, and you've got Green Bay, Detroit, Minnesota, and Tampa, and San Francisco, and San Francisco. That's pretty good odds, isn't yeah, it? I'm t- I'd take that. I'd take that because if you look at the AFC, um, who you, who's who else is there really? Well, it's Cincinnati to start the year, but they don't look like it. Buffalo, I don't know if I'm going to go with Buffalo yet. I'm not high on them. They might be the eight best teams in the NFL. There's a good chance. You could definitely Yeah, I guess argue. you could look at Washington. Yeah, but I don't think they're quite there yet. They got a fun team to watch. They got with Jaden Daniels and explosive offense, but I don't know if their defense is there yet. I don't think they're going to get to the Super Bowl. I, oh, will they make no. the playoffs? I think so. I think so. Now hold on just a darn minute. Well, then let's hold on. Their defense uh, has allowed the fewest points in the NFL. That's fine. I still don't think that they're ready to make that leap to be one of the top teams. Well, hold on just a minute. Well, we can hold on. I don't, think, I, I don't think you can say that. Well, I just did. With a straight face. Well, I, do I look like I'm smiling or frowning at all? No, but uh, well, then, there, I, then I said it with a straight face. Well, I don't know what you want them to do. Well, I'm, it's not. I'm not saying they're not going to be good, but if you're asking me if they're going to be one of the teams that could get to the NF or the championship or the Super Bowl, my answer is no. You want to know what uh, is going to be a very interesting game coming up next week? What's that? Chicago visiting Washington. Caleb, Caleb Williams, Williams and Jaden Daniels. And my gosh. Well, that'll be. What time is that a noon game or are they going to show that one at least? That's a late afternoon game on CBS. Well, at least it's in the afternoon. Can we show that at in prime time? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, why are we watching the Jets again? I don't get it. We well, we've rehashed that. Nobody I know wants we have. to see I'm that. Just tired of it. Well, I'm tired of it too. I mean, I, we're all tired of it. There's no need to keep putting them on TV. Yeah, I mean, especially when you got so many good. Look at the games you said. At least the Monday night game, Tampa-Baltimore will be all right. 
That would be added, worth watching. Why they added the second Monday night game and of all teams, the Chargers and Cardinals? What's the point? Next week, the Monday night game is the Giants and Steelers. Dallas and San Francisco is the Sunday night game. Well, Dallas, San Francisco, I can see why. I guess. And the Thursday night game next week is Minnesota and the Rams. Well, that's not as bad as the one tonight. We are joined by Paul Mills, the head men's basketball coach at Wichita State. Had their uh, media day today. Uh, Coach Mills, welcome. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. So you've been talking to a bunch of media members. What what was the best question you were asked today? Man, that's that's a good one. Um, are the <laughs> Tough Astros? To think of one, isn't it? Yeah, are the Astros as bad as the White Sox? Considering they were only two days removed from vacationing at the same time. So wow, uh, yeah, ooh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a low blow. <laughs> I, I had to remind them. I think the White Sox season was over three months earlier. So, <laughs> if not five, yeah, yeah, exactly. So we're all very, we're all very curious about this basketball team. It's an interesting makeup of a roster because there are quite a few guys that we're familiar with that uh, played roles on last year's team and had moments of uh, of uh, positivity. But there's also a lot of newcomers, including some uh, uh, transfers uh, that are intriguing as well. It, it's an interesting roster. Is it an interesting team? What's the team been looking like on the floor? Yeah, I mean, guys have been great. You know, we, we've had them all here, uh, ex, uh, except for Mate. Mate is from Croatia, so Mate got here at the start of school in August. But we've had everybody else here since the beginning of June. So that ability just to have them on campus, the fact that, you know, we get access to them, we, we can go through workouts, and just seeing who they are as people, how they fit with one another, uh, that, that, that whole process is fun to me. And, you know, we, we do have five of the uh, top seven from a year ago returning and feel as if everybody's gotten be- better you know, of that group, you had Ronnie and Bijan who were only able to play half the season and felt like it took them a little bit of time to get acclimated. So to have those guys who've kind of been with us the entire time and being able to play in addition to the new guys and felt we've been able to address needs that were there and feel, feel everybody's optimistic about this time of year, but feel really good about this group. Coach, you mentioned, you know, you had five of your top seven come back. But I got to ask, because this day and age in in college athletics, how tough is is it to build a program when everybody can jump to the portal and take off or you got to go there to find guys to fill your roster? How difficult is that for you? Because I can't imagine uh, the stress it puts on you halfway through a year when you know some kids are probably going to be gone. Yeah, I I would tell you. You know, unfortunately, it is a situation where I think there's a lot of turnover year after year. I mean, we only ended up with three transfers, uh, which was the lowest in our conference. The, there were several teams in our league that had double-digit transfers, and the average was a little north of eight. And so you do realize that it is the current climate, not only of just college basketball, but college football and so forth. So there, there is a lot of turnover. I feel bad for fans. I think the days of having the Fred Van Vleets and Ron Bakers here for four years where fans can grow accustomed to knowing a guy and watching his game improve, uh, I think a lot of those days are are. That, that that's going to be history uh, moving forward. But I, I will tell you, I mean, you you need buy-in. I mean, there's no such thing as one foot in, one foot out. You're, you're either fully committed or you're not. And so there's really no halfway commitment. And I, I would tell you that, that there may be teams that experience, hey, we know this guy's leaving in January. I fortunately have never had to deal with that. Um, you know, during any of my time anywhere, uh, whether it was at Baylor or you, and even last year's group, I thought 
Uh, and a testament to that was being able to win games down the stretch and being able to win games at the conference tournament. But Felcher had a group that was all in, and I, I feel that way about this group. I just think we've added some pieces and depth that put us in a position to have a better record. Paul Mills with us, head uh, basketball coach for the Shockers. Uh, they opened the season with an exhibition game October 27th against Emporia State. A road game, their regular season opener at Western Kentucky on the 4th of November. And then the home opener, Montana State visiting Coke Arena on Saturday, November 9th. I want to follow up on Jason's question a little bit and kind of go back to the roster construction. Because we're still fans of college basketball. I was in the media forever, but I was in the media because I love uh, college basketball. So you have a, a team that's laden with uh, a lot of seniors. Mm-hmm. Uh, you also have some younger players, but really a lot of seniors. In this day of the transfer portal uh, at a school like Wichita State, how has that changed your recruiting strategy? Is is it ideal to try to get uh, transfer seniors to come to your school? I, I, I guess I'm just trying to figure out how it all works, Paul. I, what was What was your thought process when you were constructing this roster, because you you, know, you also have a couple of highly thought of freshmen on this team, how do you get them enough time on the floor to keep them uh, to keep them content? Yeah, I don't know that any player will ever be content. They all want to play forty. They all believe they can play forty, and so I, I do think that that's part of the development process. Is you know we we talk pretty early about what development looks like and and how it goes and the reality is especially when you're younger is you don't know what you don't know and you you've never experienced a college weight room you've never experienced a practice an individual much less competitively seeing what else is out there not only from a non-conference perspective so from a conference so we we are pretty upfront about all of the trials and tribulations that that players go through but we, we do try to let them know that man we're we're here to walk with you through this G- going back to uh the, the question about getting older guys, I am, uh, you're going to win with older guys, in my opinion, the more experienced guys. I remember Rick Barnes is a really good friend and was talking to him one time and he was telling me how this guy named Kevin Durant was getting beat every day in, in competition. And I remember thinking, like, man, if a freshman Kevin Durant can't can't beat these 22-year-olds, he was 18 at the time, I was just like, there's no freshman in the country that's really going to be able to understand. Now, as the season went on, obviously Kevin had a terrific career uh, the one year that he was there at Texas. But it it is a situation where 22-year-olds are usually going to be better than 18-year-olds. And I, the the old adage of get old, stay old, I've experienced teams that, that have won, and it's usually with a more experienced uh, team. And having guys who've kind of been through the gauntlet and understand the competitiveness night in and night out, because the majority of these games are one and two possession games. And I think the older, more experienced guys understand the the value of every single possession and, and how, how it translates to the final score. I'm going to follow up real briefly on that because this this topic just intrigues the heck out of me. So I agree with you. Older, experienced players uh, make a big difference. They're a positive. But are we going to see schools bring them in for just one year? We, we spoke earlier about uh, the days of watching a player develop uh, as a fan, watching a kid go from a freshman uh, who may be struggling a little bit to being an all-conference junior or senior. Uh, uh, you, you mentioned those days are over. And with all these seniors, how do fans develop uh, some kind of a bond with players who are just here for a short amount of time? Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, it is it is kind of the climate today that you, you have guys that come in, they're, they're here for a while, and, and then they leave. I do think that with freshmen, 
Um, they, they, it, it either it either has to go one of two ways. Like they have to know and they have to be able to play, or they have to know uh, that they're coming in and it's going to be a red shirt year. You know, we we were able to do that last year. Uh, we had a young man, Giannis Bamba, and, and we let him know early that this was going to be a red shirt and and just how to how to embrace that. And so I do think that it, it's it's I, I say this a lot to our players that it's unkind to be unclear and I think what you have to do is you have to have hard conversations with them and their families about what this looks like moving forward so will college basketball I think if you look at the teams that were able to flip it uh, South Carolina for instance in the SEC they finished second last year tied with Alabama uh, and, and had a had a went and got a whole bunch of older guys. Seton Hall did this did the same after having a bad first year. Ended up winning the NIT championship. But I, I do think that everybody's trying to upgrade their roster. And if you can find a more experienced player, while being very transparent with your current guys, I think it's a win win for everybody. Well, Coach, I got um, just curious on your thoughts of the uh, the conference this year. What do you see? Who's going to be tough? And uh, where do you see Wichita State falling in that? Yeah, I, I I'd like to say I see Wichita State winning it all, uh, but we need to play some games in order to really figure out where we're at. Uh, we were able to scrimmage Oklahoma State on Saturday, and so that was a good test for us. Just being able to see where we were compared to where we were a year ago and what areas have we actually made progress in. But I will tell you, I think uh, UAB is in a great situation. They they won the conference tournament last year. Uh, they have the, the player who's predicted as the – player of the year but he was the defensive player of the year a year ago so if you if you have one player who can be both the most dominant defensive player and the most valuable player you're in a pretty good situation they ended up with three teams on the preseason uh, all conference i think memphis will be good uh they they've been good i think they'll continue to be good and then I think you see a lot of teams. Uh, North Texas added a lot of experience. Uh, we've added a lot of experience. Uh, U- USF, uh, South Florida from last year, uh, has a number of core pieces returning from a, a regular season conference championship. And I, I will tell you that any time that you go on the road in this league, it's going to be tough. Uh, we, we've exper- I experienced that a year ago when our team did. So, But I do feel that if you look at UAB, if you look at Memphis, those, those right now, and they, they were predicted as such uh, during the conference uh, preseason rankings, that th- those two teams will be extremely good. Final moment here with Paul Mills. We appreciate his time. Very busy, we understand. Uh, Shocker uh, basketball, that's what we're talking about. So of the newcomers, of the guys that are are new to your program, uh, give us a couple names because I'm I'm curious who's made an impression. Uh, Last year, this team played hard and consistently fought and and had good moments, uh, but sometimes the shooting fell flat. Have you been able to find shooters? Uh, well, for, I think to replace a Colby Rogers. Yeah, I, I will tell you that I thought our biggest need um, we needed to find people who could convert free throws, and you know we had opportunities in a number of games where free throw percentage just wasn't what it needed to be. We were we were sixty nine percent the other day in in our scrimmage. We, we ended up shooting seventy seven percent. Uh, and we, I think we need a team that can convert from the free throw line. So we needed to get Quincy Baller needed to improve, and, and he, he's done that. But uh, that, that's where shooting for us uh, needed to come in. We do need uh, depth uh, in, in order to be able to be competitive from the three-point line from, from a spacing perspective. So to be able to add Justin Hill from Georgia, just an average double digits at Georgia, he was third in the SEC in assist rate. And so anytime you can get a guy who, man, you know what, you've played at a high level, you were amongst the top three passers in that league, you shot it really well, uh, and you could you can score, he provides a different look and a level of physicality that that's really rare in this uh 
in this league from what I experienced from a year ago because uh, when you look at him, he's built like a fire hydrant and can get wherever he needs to on the floor. A.J. McGinnis was a 40% three-point shooter from Lipscomb. He also played at Cincinnati, but that's kind of what he's known for is his ability to knock down the three ball. And then Corey Washington does a phenomenal job. He was at St. Peter's, was an all-conference player, led those guys uh, to the NCAA tournament. He's a guy who can get to the free throw line at a high level, but you can get there and not be able to convert them. Fortunately, uh, he can convert them. And so I, I think with the pieces that we've added, uh, feel good about where they add up in, in our current lineup. Well, we're looking forward to it. It's not very far away. The Shockers with with an exhibition game uh, in 10 nights, a week from Sunday. Paul Mills has been our guest. Paul, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Bob, let me, let me publicly tell you, uh, I haven't privately told you this either, but I, I'm such a big baseball fan. And all the work that you did in order to make sure that – uh, that Jackie Robinson statue uh, was replaced. I just drove by there the other day. I just, from my, from just being a baseball fan, I just want to say thank you. Well, that's nice of you to say, and I'm going to try to get you to throw out one of our first pitches next spring. Okay, it'll be slow and in the dirt, but I'll be happy to do it. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Paul Mills, Wichita State men's basketball coach. We'll take a break, come back. That was nice of Paul to say that. It was. We'll come back in a moment. Kids. It's showtime, baby. You'll go wacko, bananas, nuts, crazy, unbelievable. This is the Bob and Jeff Show, starring Bob Lutz. I miss Duda. You know, that's the kind of son you want. I hear you loud and clear. In Jason Duda. For today, anyway. That's right. Gotcha. Thanks, Canada. I'll take it from here. 97.5 in 1240 KFH. It's going to be legend. Wait for it. And I hope you're not lactose intolerant because the second half of that word is dairy. Legendary. <clears throat> we call this segment Jive Talk here on the show. It was designed for you to call and give us your thoughts. But now it's the banter, jive. Let's jive a little bit, you know? Yes, sir. Welcome back. Hour number two, the Bob and Jeff show. Jason Duda in for Jeff today. He's uh, waiting for a shuttle in Las Vegas. He's still waiting for a shuttle. Jeff, I will, some mind, uh, that, Jeff uh, I, will, I will give you $20. Take a cab. <laughs> I will give you $20, and you're listening because you have nothing else to do if you're sitting and waiting for a shuttle. I will give you $20 if you take a cab. Well, I'd at least go hit a slot machine. I'd... My last time in Las Vegas, I think I took $800. And uh, before the first night was over, I was down to a couple. Yeah, it doesn't take long out there. I was there. down to a couple bills. I've been out there lots of times. And I'm not talking happens. $100 bills either. No, I understand. Completely. 100%. But I rallied now. Oh, yeah, well, I had that promo, rallied, Bob. That's all you need. I had that promo, Bob. You Say you, that again, Max. I used to have that on a promo. You hawked your watch. Yeah, well, that may that may be an exaggeration, but uh, I was down. I was I was pretty down, and I was wondering. You know, I got two and a half more days here. Yep. What are you gonna do? <laughs> but he's just gonna sit in my room. I, I. What else are you gonna do? But what happened was, I went to a craps table, and got on a roll. No, well, if you get on a roll in the and craps that, table, that, you that, can do you, well. That doesn't always happen. No, because you can go to a craps table and. Go with however many hundreds you want, and somebody's just tossing a seven after they make a point, and it's all gone in a hurry. But the money I lost did not happen on a crap staple. That that handed that hap happened uh, on slots and blackjack. Yeah, see, I don't mind slots, but I prefer the tables myself. There's something addictive about slots. Mm, yeah, yeah, I would say so. And they're mindless, and you think, so you don't I'm going to get the big one, baby. Yeah, and it just does, never seems to happen, does it? But at the crap stable, it all came together for Oh, me. such a good player. <laughs> such a good player. Man, I wish I'd have been there to see it. Well, I'm not talking. I didn't leave Vegas with any winnings. Oh, I, But I, I was able to at least get through the three days we had there and have, you know, have a little money and have some fun. And well, that's kind of the goal. 
If you're going out there thinking you're going to win, and you, then you shouldn't go. No, you're not coming back with anything. No, you got to go expecting to lose. That's kind of your entertainment. And if something happens where you win, hey, great. I got spoiled, though. My very first trip to Las Vegas uh, was with Jeff's mother back in the day. We just went out there. And uh, I put I put 50 cents, a dollar, whatever it was, in one of those video poker machines. Mm-hmm. And won fifteen hundred. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, you're you're done. After <laughs> that, it's like, oh, this is easy. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> I don't. That was most, one of the most amazing moments of my life. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. I like that. You don't hear those very no, often. Not very not often 50 at all. Cents. I think I came home with a little money that trip. I would hope so. But there's been others that. Uh, hmm. Oh, uh, you don't have to tell me. I, I, mean, I have to fly back on the wing. That's well, at least you got back. Look at it like that. 869-1240 if you want to give us a call. Uh, we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to make our football picks coming up in about 10 minutes or so. Some very intriguing games. I'm looking forward to it because everybody's kind of feeling it right now, especially Duda. Oh yeah, who's had two good weeks in a row. That, I, that's never happened. It, it, it's going it, to it'll happen again. You guys, you're going to be chasing me all year. And uh, we're finally hitting a little bit of a stride here. Uh, we're getting it together. And uh, we'll see if the big fella, this, this may be the last mention of the big fella. I, I, I don't know what happened. Love the kid, but you got to answer the bell, right? Well, maybe something happened to him. Hopefully not. Hopefully he's fine. I don't know. I don't know. Can't just disappear, can you? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? I don't. If I knew, I'd give you the answer. But unfortunately, I have no clue. We're just here to try to make it happen. By the way, I know a lot of Dodgers fans out there. Freddie Freeman not in the lineup for L.A. tonight against the Mets in Game 4 against the left-hander Jose Quintana. Uh, Freddie was Freddie's struggling on that ankle. And uh, they're probably saying, it's pretty cold here in New York. Let's give the kid a night off and see if we can... Uh, somehow figure out a way here. Yeah, because, I mean, you want that bat in the lineup. There's no question about it. Tommy Edmond crushes left-handers. He's hitting fourth. Tommy Edmond, I will guarantee you, has never batted fourth in a big <laughs> league game, but he is tonight in game four of the National League Championship Series. Maybe the Cardinals should have bat him, hit him fourth. Maybe so. Maybe that was well, the against demise. against left-handers, he would have held his own because he really hits left-handed pitching as a switch hitter. Uh, doesn't do so well against right-handers, but he'll, he had three hits last night as a left-handed hitter. Well, he's hitting, what's he hitting in the playoffs? If like you're a 500? former Cardinal, you're going to do very well, folks. That's just the way it is. Cardinals give away everybody. You're going to do very well in the postseason. They give away everybody. I don't know what their deal is. Shut up, would you? Well, I'm just, have, they do. You can't, you, you can be mad. Well, I will be mad. But you know, it's true. Did your voice just. Do you know it's true. There. <laughs> I thought I heard that. Yeah, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> that was weird. I, I, You saw me kind of do a double take, didn't you? You did a double take. And there was a reason for the double take, and I I can't explain it. <laughs> it happens. I just made make sure I'm not hearing things. Uh, but anyway, boy, that threw me off. Well, it's true. <laughs> And then we've got the Guardians and Yankees coming up uh, very shortly here. And uh, Guardians, as we've talked about, and you and Jeff, I'm sure, talked about it a lot yesterday. A little bit, yeah. yeah he was kinda... very. He, he gets touchy about these things. Yeah, you got to watch it. I enjoy it because it's easy to push his buttons a little bit. I'm not going to lie to you. I, like, I enjoy you that. You like that. Nobody, I, I everybody that. who's ever heard you knows you like that. I, I kind of enjoy it. So th- that was You've good. You've done that your whole life, I'm sure. A, a little bit, yeah. I can picture you as that kid growing up in Sexsmith. Yeah. Just trying to get under everybody's skin. Yeah, I used to just ride my bike around just seeing if anybody was outside just to do it. Just to practice. Just to get on them a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just a little what bit. What would you say to them? Oh, I don't know. Just driving by and be like, oh. Are you sure you really want to plant that flower there and then leave? You know, little things. Oh, little things. what a! I bet they hated you. Oh, it just despised me. They couldn't <laughs> wait till I left at fifteen to go away to play hockey. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, where were we? I don't know. Where were we? I have no idea. We think Cleveland. We were talking a little bit about Cleveland. I need to know where we they... were. I've completely hey, lost track. In all honesty, do you think they win tonight? I know we said they have to. I just, I just can't. I, I, I couldn't pick them to win. And I, I get it. The Yankees are pretty dangerous offensively. They seem to be uh, figuring it out. I mean, they, they. Uh, I'd be careful. Aaron Judge hit a home run. Uh, Soto's un- unreal. Stanton, very good. Uh, Glaber Torres in the leadoff spot's been incredible. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about this. How do you feel about it? Well, when you're, when you're, you know that you're kind of in trouble. And I understand it was second and third, but when you're intentionally walking to load the bases to pitch to judge, how good is Juan Soto? What does that tell you? Well, he's incredible. And he's, he's fantastic. Cleveland doesn't have two guys like that. Ramirez, very good. Absolutely. But they don't have anybody else. I just I just don't think they're going to have enough. I'm sorry, Jeff, but they you just don't have enough right now offensively to get back in this series. That's my that's my thought. That's where I'm at. Well, you're facing uh, Clark Schmidt, who can be good. Uh, you got Matthew Boyd going. Uh, you got to win it. You got to win it. The, you watch this crowd. They're going to be raucous. It's going to be a great crowd. Yeah. Uh, the Guardians. Okay. I'm not, I'm not I'm going to say that. they win today. I, I can see them winning today. Now, maybe that's because I want them to win, uh, and I don't want this to go any farther than right here. I want my son to be happy. Whoa. Now, whoa. let's say the Guardians were to win tonight, and then tomorrow also win. Okay. And he goes to the concert Friday night, has a great time. The Guardians then also win on Saturday and he goes to the concert again on Saturday and enjoys that. Wouldn't that be the, wouldn't that turn his life around? Wouldn't he then become a little, a little more happy? I would, wouldn't he become just a little more easy to deal with? You think he would, but he'll find something where it's not. That's just Jeff. I love the kid too, but that's Jeff. He'll find something to pick at that is going to be like, well, they're not going to do it now. I can see it. I can see him saying it already because it's what he does. He's on it, then he's off it. Like the roller coaster is awful. How would you not enjoy those three days? Well, he would. But then you're right. He'd find something. He'd find something because uh, it's just Jeff. Anthony, what are you doing? I don't know. I'm ahead of time, but I just wanted to let y'all know the big fellow's back on regular schedule. And I heard you guys calling me right. out. While I was, heard you guys calling well, me out. Well, you could have sent us your picks funeral. last week, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know. This, I'm sorry. It was a hectic week last week with the schedule change <laughs> on the job. So it just sounds like you lost loose. your dog, man. Come on now. Uh, you're still not well, that far behind Max. So, well, we, you know, being away from you guys for a week, it's almost like losing a best friend. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, all right. Well, we'll take a break, and when we come back, you'll join us for picks. Uh, we've right. got some interesting we'll games. That's coming up next. It's Bob and Jason and the big fella. We'll be joined by Jeff and Max when we return. Stay with us. This is the Bob and Jeff Show on 97.5 and 12.40 KFH. Time rolls on. That. 
David Lee Roth trying to make a song good. It's called Damn Good, which uh not sure I think the song's damn good. Well, that's, that's up to you. I've never heard of yeah, it. Yeah, no, that's not something you need to delve into. I'm not going to. Anthony with us. Max with us. Jeff has sent in his picks. He's currently in a noisy environment, he says, at the uh, airport in Las Vegas, uh, waiting to get on a shuttle to his uh, <laughs> What's he doing? He was there and hotel. left. <laughs> Jeff was? Yeah, he's calling back. Hold on. Let's, uh, let's, Listen, I, I don't know what the guy's doing. Nobody does. Uh, let's let's get into it. Uh, because here we are. We're ready to go, right? Let's go. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. These are the toughest. This is the He's toughest back. week yet. Uh, Jeff, do we have Hello? you? Oh, oh God. No. Hello? No. No. Uh, try to be a professional. Are you there? I don't know, he hung up again. No. Max, no more Jeff. Let's, we're done. We're good without him. Uh, I'm not going to put up with that. No. As a standard bearer for this show. Which is not that high. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> uh, let's start with uh, Oklahoma State, which has had a horribly disappointing year. On the road at BYU. The uh, BYU is good. And they're really good at home. Uh, this is a nine and a half point game according to the odds makers, and I think it's an easy one for BYU. I'm going eight points. Jeff is also going eight points for BYU. Dude, are you going to keep this team I am alive? Not. I am not, but I'm sticking with BYU for five. Just five. Just five. Where's the lack of confidence coming from? Well. This is one of those games where Oklahoma State just might decide to show up. They have enough talent to do it, but I still think BYU is going to beat them. Max, your, your pick. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with Jeff. Oklahoma they ain't going to do anything. BYU for eight. Anthony, you going to make it a clean sweep? Well, I feel like this BYU is good. They proved it against K-State. Oklahoma State, they're basically sniffing the bottom like KU is. So I'm going to go eight on BYU. Boy, everybody. Everybody with the Cougars. Wait, BYU. Yeah. Uh, Alabama at Tennessee. Alabama a favorite on the road, but by only two and a half points. Jeff picking Tennessee for three. Uh, What about you, dude? This should be a really good game. Tennessee's at home. I think they want to. This is this is their game. I don't have a ton of confidence in it, but I, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna go with Tennessee, but just for two. Yeah, this game gives me a headache. Max, uh, Bama ain't what it used to be. Tennessee's at home. I'll take Tennessee for six. Wow, Max shooting it up there. There he is, Anthony. It is a home game for Tennessee. Alabama proved that they can't keep a lead, although they squeaked the game out against Georgia. I'm taking the home team, Tennessee, with four. Tennessee is another one of those teams that I never quite can be sure of. No, you can't. I'm going to go against the grain and pick Alabama, but for only two. Uh, Next, the game of the week, Georgia. At Texas. Man. Texas, I think, I think they're for real. I do, too. And Texas, for years, I was never a fan. They Four never knew what points. was going to show up. But I think this is this will be their statement game. Um, I'm going to take Texas for four. Texas for four. You're not making a big statement. No, I four. said they're going to. What about you, Max? Texas is good, but... Georgia's desperate. They have, they lose this, they won't even be in consideration for the playoffs. So I'm going to take Georgia for three, just because de- they're desperate. Yeah, that's an, an interesting strategy. Uh, Anthony, what do you what do you think? I am actually going to take Texas because it's at home, and they've been looking for these type of matchups at their home stadium. They finally got it. It's their time to shine. So I'm going to take Texas, but I'm going to go three. 
Yeah, I think we're all high on Texas, but we're showing our doubt a little yes. bit because they've burned us in the past. Always. And even when our when when we're trying to be confident about them, we're scared they're going to burn us here. I'm going to go ahead and jump in a little more in the, in more of the deep end of the pool with really? Texas. I'm picking them for 6. Mm. Jeff is picking Texas for 2. I am I'm I'm making a statement. Oh, yeah, you of course you are. <laughs> I mean, the, absolutely. Michigan on the road in Champaign to face Illinois. They are a three and a half point favorite on the road. We start this one with Max. Illinois has been a tough out all year. And I like him at home, but I'll take Illinois for two. Illinois for two. Anthony? I'm going to take the same deuce on Illinois just because they're at home and you don't know where you're getting with Michigan this year. So, Illinois for two. Illinois for two. I like Illinois as well. Uh, I like Illinois for a little more. Illinois for four. Jeff likes Illinois, but for only one. Duda, are you going to make it a clean sweep? Well, if you've known me and listened to this, you know that that's not going to happen when you four pick the same team. There's no way it's going to happen. But I'm not that confident, but I'll take Michigan for one. All right, you go the other way. (laughs) Kansas State is uh, going to be in Morgantown. Always a weird place to play. They are a two and a half point favorite against West Virginia. Anthony, you get the first pick on this one. I'm going to roll the dice on this with my next highest pick. K State then already played in a hostile environment and was sucking for air because they was at high altitude. Now they're back on level playing ground. I'm taking Kansas State in the two and a half. Seven points. Seven. Boy, that's a lot of confidence. I like K-State, too, and I'm going right there with you. Seven points. Jeff. Oh, man. He goes to K-State for seven as well. Is this where I decide that I'm not going to go with K-State? Here's your chance. I think they do win this, but like we've talked about, what what is about West Virginia that makes it so tough to play up there? I don't know. K-State on the road is squeaking by all these games. I'm going to run with West Virginia for three. (laughs) Uh, Max? Well, having heard Tim Fitzgerald this morning, he called this a linchpin trap game. So uh, it it will decide K-State season. I'll take K-State for one. Uh, there's, I don't I don't get why you guys I, I certainly don't get why you'd pick West Virginia but you have you've you you believe in yourself now you've had a couple I mean, good weeks in a row I can see this being a 24 23 game yeah good for you it I, will be we haven't asked well nobody's asked your opinion it about will be. well actually every, you just did ask my opinion now we go to the NFL and here's where Duda believes he will shine he saved his big number picks uh, for the NFL. Because he knows more about it than any of us. That's right. Houston at Green Bay. Green Bay a a two-and-a-half point favorite. At home, I like Houston in this game. I think they are a legitimate Super Bowl threat. I like them for one. Jeff picks Green Bay for four. Duda? Houston? Normally plays on turf in a dome. They're going to grass on the road. Green Bay has looked pretty good. I think Green Bay wins this game. I got Green Bay for six. Max, what about you? Yeah, I like Green Bay at home. I don't know if uh, the top receiver for Houston is going to be back, so I'll take the pack for five. And uh, Anthony? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point with uh Nico Collins being out, I do believe he's out their top receiver. So you got to go they with got Green seven Bay. Seven others. You got to go with Green Bay. Oh, and seven others. Well, if that be the case, Green Bay and five. Wait, did I always say five? Yeah. No, I didn't. You guys, five. I'm gonna catch you. I'm gonna go buy you. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, with with that, old, with that one big oh, yeah, point, I can't wait. Terrible. 
Uh, all of you are terrible. We'll look back Detroit. at the end of the year for that. It was that Houston game he picked the one? What's Max saying? Oh, he's just giving <laughs> he's uh, just giving you a couple jobs we got, there. We got five guys making picks, and Max is in eighth place. That's it's not I don't know how that works. Guy's still top ten. Detroit, Minnesota, Minnesota unbeaten. Detroit looks at times like the best team in the league. This is a fantastic game. It's nearly a pick 'em game, but uh, Minnesota is going to give a point and a half. Jeff picks the Detroit Lions. For five. Duda? Hutchinson's out, which hurts, but this is still a really good team. I can't see Sam Darnold continuing on this path that he's on. I think this is a high-scoring game, but I think Detroit has a little bit more. I love Detroit in this. I got Detroit for eight. What a terrible (laughs) Max? Yeah, you know, Hutchinson uh, had 40 of the 60-something quarterback pressures, but... I like the Lions either way for four. Nobody buying into the Vikings. What about you, Anthony? I'm buying into the Vikings. Like to say, Aiden Hutchinson is hurt. I do believe that Detroit is susceptible in the defensive backfield. This is going to be a feast and famine for Justin Jefferson and Darnold. I'm going six on Minnesota. Yeah, I think these teams are both really good. And I think uh, both of these teams will win their home games against each other. Uh, Minnesota's at home. That, that counts for something, man. It does. Uh, I, like, I, don't, I don't understand y'all. I, 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 don't, I don't understand y'all. I'll just say that. Uh, Minnesota for five. So Anthony and I are right there together. Yeah, mis- mistakes are always made. You two will be okay. Baltimore and Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, the home team, they are getting three and a half points at home. Uh, we start with Jeff, right? I think that's no. We start with uh, Duda. I'm sorry, Duda. This is going to be a good one. I don't. Uh, I don't know if Tampa is going to be ready for Henry. Is the problem? But that three and a half, Tampa at home. I'm going to. I'm going to run with the Bucks on this. I got Tampa for six. No, you got to go seven. Or you already seven. used your seven. Six. That's right. Uh, Max. Well, unless Derrick Henry, like he did before, takes the first handoff of 60 yards. I like Baker Mayfield and Tampa for five in this one. Anthony, you gonna you going to swoop in and make fools of these boys? Let me see. Baltimore and Tampa. If, if Baltimore gets a lead, they're going to try to negate Tampa's offense, which could be high potent. And they're going to grind it out. I'm going to take Baltimore, but I'm only giving one confidence point. One for Baltimore. Uh, yeah. I think it's going to be a good game. I, I like Tampa, but I like Baltimore more. Uh, Baltimore for three. And Jeff picks Baltimore for six. So we're all over the place on that game. Finally, the bonus game. Here's where we really test Max. The one through ten point bonus game, Kansas City on the road to play San Francisco late Sunday afternoon rematch of last year's Super Bowl. Kansas City, an underdog, underdog. Don't say that very often. To a three and three team, San Francisco, uh, Kansas City getting a point and a half. Duda, I'm sorry, Max starts. Max, what do you got, boy? In spite of on, Christian McCaffrey not being there, Ayuk. Sambo will show up. The Ricky Owen will have no chance. 49ers for five. Only five. That says speaks volumes, well, doesn't it, Duda? I'm in last place. <laughs> well, next to last. But. Anthony, what about you? Man, I don't know who's crazy enough to make Kansas City an underdog. They can play this game in San Francisco, New York, wherever they want to play it at. I'm rolling with Kansas City, and guess what? I'm reclaiming my throne. Give me a 10 spot. Oh, Anthony's back with a vengeance. I like Kansas City as well. Um, I don't know that I think, uh, I don't know that I feel it for 10, but I feel it for 7. Jeff uh, feels it for 8, the Chiefs. Duda, what about you? Well, Casey... They're still 5-0. and oh. We always like, how, how, how. They still get it done. 
San Francisco lost to Arizona this year. Arizona's terrible. Yeah, I don't think they're fully healthy. The Chiefs are a dog coming off a bye. I'm with Anthony. I got Kansas City for Man, 10. Dude is feeling it. It's all good, boys. Rarely do you see a guy feeling it like this. <laughs> mm. All right. Thank That's you, guys. We appreciate it. It'll be an interesting week. There you go. They're gone. They're gone. Boy, it's windy out today. Isn't it? And uh, I don't know where the wind came from. I, I but, don't know uh, either. I was walking in earlier and, uh, d- you know, very uncomfortable. Is it? Well, I mean, that's what I thought. It'd I don't be, know. be tough for a man of your age to be outside. Yeah, for and I don't know how you uh, keep the flight of a soccer ball in, in, in a straight line. What? Uh, if I'm going to go to a soccer game, I want to watch it in ideal condition. Oh, you do? Sure. So, like, what, what are you thinking? Mm, 82. Oh. Wins five to ten. Jeez, that sounds like Tuesday next week. Oh, really? Yeah, it does. <laughs> really? <laughs> I may have to. <laughs> I may. Have to, <laughs> I may have to make it next Tuesday. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll get there before I graduate. How's that? This seven years this has been. Has he graduated? Not yet. All right. No, but my daughter's graduating this year. Yeah, I don't know if I'll get to see her. Because this is it, right? Yeah. The State gr- tournament 6A coming up tomorrow and Saturday in Kansas City. Yep. She's representing the Mays Eagles. Yes. And as her number two singles player. Yes. She opens against a young woman from uh, Topeka, Washburn Rural tomorrow. I believe so, yes. Oh, well, we wish her the yeah, best of luck. It's, it's going to be fun. You're uh, going to be right there courtside. Oh, I'll be, I can't wait to get up there. I'll be leaving around 6 in the morning. They play at 10. The girls are on their way right now. Riley Fry is the other singles player, along with my daughter Avery, uh, Maddie, uh, Maddie Fluez, and uh, Danica Miller are the doubles oh, team. Oh, you had to struggle up. for that, didn't you? Oh, I, I didn't want to get them mixed up. That's all. But uh, really looking forward to it. I've, I've I've had a blast watching these girls over the last four years. And uh, as seniors, Riley's been to state. The other three haven't. So I'm just really proud of these girls. It's been a ton of fun watching. I can't wait to get up there. I We joke about tennis and soccer, but I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed the high school sports, especially with the kids in it. Somebody listening to you right now? Because well, I, this I, is... I hope they're all listening because, well, in all gonna... honesty, I can't wait to get up to watch this. Well, you're going to be the hero of the whole uh, contingent. Well, as... You're making me look bad. Well, that's easy to do. It's easy to do in certain situations. This is going to be fun. I literally can't wait. Like I'm almost jealous. Now, I'm almost jealous that Dia's going up tonight, and I got to go up in the morning. Well, why don't you go up tonight? Well, Jackson's got his games. We've got to get things set up for tomorrow, and I got no problem driving up. It's not going to be not going to be a well, big uh, deal. There you go. Then I mean, so uh, we're going to go watch the girls fight and try to get some wins now, and, what's and see the how they do. Like, uh, do, is this a double elimination? It's basically a double elimination. So there's 24 singles of 24 doubles teams top eight get a buy so riley gets a buy and maddie and danica get a buy in the first round so if they win their second if they win their first game which is the second round they will medal for sure if you win if you lose your first game you go to the backside and you can still get back up there they so, uh, started playing uh, girls tennis state tournament in uh, 1985 uh in all those years, what are we now? It's almost 40 years. Yeah. This is the 40th it. year. It would be, yep. Of state tournaments. One team from the Wichita area has won. When was that? Wichita Southeast back in 1986. Isn't that something? That's crazy. It's been a sport dominated by the Northeast. Let's go. Let's go break that string. I'd love to see it. Uh, Shawnee Mission East is your juggernaut. Uh, in the state of Kansas in girls' tennis. I think they've won five in a row, and uh, they'll be formidable. But, hey, you go up and play. That's right. You go up and play. You go play. You never know what can happen. That's why it's sports. It's not played on paper. doesn't matter what seed you are or who you're playing. You play the person that's across the net from you. And we don't expect it to be windy up there tomorrow like it is today. Oh, so you're going to come up and watch the girls too tomorrow? If it was here, boy, I'd be all over. I know you would, and we'd all appreciate it. Ah. You think you'll make it? How's your wife doing? 
She's listening right now. You ask her. I bet she's laughing. You think? I bet she's having a good time, a good chuckle. Because I'm a lovable individual. I may not be a dependable individual. Very true. Uh, or a, a or a trustworthy individual. But I'm a lovable guy. Oh, so much. I mean, it'll be great to see you out at a soccer game. Maybe get to the girls' six A state tomorrow. You want? You can ride up with me if you want. Boy, it's tempting. I know it is. You'll enjoy it. I got Guarantee a radio you. show. I got to do tomorrow. I've got. Uh, oh, I'm going to speak uh, at a senior center tomorrow. Well, at, you should uh, fit right in. Well, I mean, I don't know how they'll tell the difference. If I don't get they served, probably, probably if I don't get served pudding, I'm going to be insulted. <laughs> I mean, I, I bet you they could whip some up in the back. Well, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they mistake me for a resident? Well, they probably would. They probably just think, oh, this is the guy from 4B. He's just not sure where he's at. I could go to the dining hall and fit right in. I'm Probably get a free meal. You, I may try it. Well, why wouldn't you? And I may scope out a, a room or two. Exactly. Might as well use your time wisely while you're there. It's, uh, we'll see. Oh, you'll get there. You'll Boy, get there. I'm tired. I feel like I've been carrying this show today. Have you? Not that you haven't done a nice job. Oh, of course I have. Uh, but, you know, man, we didn't have Jeff for the picks. We couldn't make fun of him. That, that, was that, kinda, throw, that threw me off. Yeah, that's kind of a loss for us. Whenever we can't make fun of him, it's, it, it's just uh, it's not quite the same. I wonder what he's doing in Vegas tonight. He's still, well, he might still be at the airport. Oh, he's going to watch the Waiting for Guardian. a shuttle. Well, he's got to get to the room. They start in uh, 15 minutes. Oh, he's. Could you imagine if the shuttle's late? He's losing his mind. Text him. He's losing his mind right now. I can't text him. I can't do that to the kid because he's just sitting there right now. You know, he's he's bebopping around. He's probably sweating. And he's going to go into the. I t- asked him this the other day. I said, You're in Vegas. Why not go to the sports book and watch the game? He's like, No way. I'm well, going to be in my room. I understand that. There's no way I'd go to a sports book. And watch the Cardinals. Mm, should try it. Might no be way. Fun. Might be fun. Might be an enjoyable adventure for you. No way. Maybe one day you'll. I now you'll try. I enjoy the sports book, and I've been every time I go to Vegas, but not with my team. You understand that? You, you certainly. Now what? Uh, Dia said she, yes. She is laughing, uh, and she also said, oh, oh, "Where to go?" <laughs> Here it is. Um, and Bob is lovable, and I will see him Tuesday for senior night at Mays High Soccer. Senior night, Yeah, huh? we're, I think we've just decided. Oh, senior night. Yeah. You're talking about their seniors. Probably, yeah. But not, not senior night well, for me. I, it could be taken either way, which is the perfect wording, right, senior? Now, do that indicates that I would stay for the varsity game. Oh, possibly. I'm going to try to let people down gently with this. <laughs> There ain't no way in hell. <laughs> now, when Jackson gets to the varsity, which could happen next year, then I'll go for the varsity game. Well, there you go. Now you got it figured out. But uh, but don't let's not get crazy here. No, I'm not staying for two soccer games. Oh, that's yeah. Getting you to one will be the first yeah, one ever. Exactly. Fair enough. So I'll probably bid adieu before the big senior night festivities. Fair enough. As long as we can get you to one, it's been seven years. There you go. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I know you are. Keep an eye on that weather for me. I will. Yeah, because if something happens, Any I know. Any sign at all. I know. You're you're done. Even a cloud. I'm not going to show up. <laughs> you're something. Uh, all right. Thank you for listening, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.